B.G. Marshall. In a strange state at the moment, here in my book-lined library, I've been browsing and coming across a well-thumbed copy of John Donne, the great English poet. My mind leaped instantly to his most famous lines. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. And suddenly I was reminded of a story which half relates to that dual prophecy and half, well, judge for yourself. Our mystery drama, When the Death Bell Tolls, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mary Jane Higby and Rosemary Rice. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sign Off, the Sinus Medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There is no terror greater than the terror of the unknown. That's a cliche almost all of us accept without question. And yet, so few of us ever really face it except vicariously. But the shakiness of the simple matter of living through each day and reaching for tomorrow touches all of our lives at one time or another. This is a story that begins with the most common and ultimate terror most of us in our mechanized world can face. The automobile out of control and headed for unavoidable destruction. Everyone, cool it. Dr. Anjuli. Yes, sir. Have, have the orderlies get the man into emergency. And get me a rundown on him. Right away, sir. The woman is dead. Nurse, take her to the morgue. Yes, Doctor. Okay, Sergeant. How did it happen? Well, I was on patrol with my buddy, Doctor, and we, we just called in our 2 a.m. check, and, and we heard this crash. Now, from the sound of it, I knew it had to be Slate's corner. Why? And if you don't mind, tell me as we... Walk into emergency. Now, I, I don't know if you know that road. Yes, Baby Lane. The Bay Berlin, right where it takes that almost 45-degree turn. With old man Slate's private brick wall facing you if you don't make it. And that's what they hit, huh? Oh, just about head on. He'd started to make a left turn, so the passenger side took the worst part of the collision. Now, that's why the woman is dead. There was fire, too. Damn car went up like a rocket. That the guy managed to roll out and get away from the flames, but the woman, well, you saw her. Yes, and she was lucky at that. Her neck was broken at the moment of impact. Probably never even felt the flames. There wouldn't be none of her left if we hadn't been able to hook her out of there. The car was still burning when we left with the ambulance. You know who they are? And we got some identification off the guy, a driver's license, etc. Dana Trent's his name. Okay, suppose you give the admitting office all the information you got while I check Mr. Trent out with Dr. Renzulli. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Oh, how's it look, Dom? He's in shock, Doctor. I've got whole blood on the way. Four quarts. Heaven knows how much he's lost. From where? He must have stuck his hand through the windshield. Both the radius and the ulna are green stick fractures and the radial artery was cut. I'm suturing it now. Oh, that's fine, nurse. Yes, bring the tree around to this right side. Yes, Dr. Mitchell. And get me a canola. you are got to make the cut down fast and get some blood into this baby. And uh, what size, Doctor? Biggest we got. You have to move fast. Swab. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> Fiend shot to hell. Arteria sclerotic. Let's have the needle. Can't get through that gunk. Give me a smaller one. It's too young to have hardening arteries like that. Must be a high liver. There. That's better. Is the blood moving? Yes, doctor. It's starting to feed in. Okay. How are you coming, Dom? I've got the fascia suit your day. You want me to do the fancy work? No, I trust your embroidery. Yeah. It's funny. If it's funny, tell me. I could use a laugh. No, not funny that way. 
Well, I was talking to the sergeant. From his report, he must have gotten to the accident within a couple of minutes. They had a tourniquet on Mr. Trent here as soon as they had him in the ambulance. And the police must have done something to stem the bleeding till it got there. So how come he's lost so much blood? You search me. You can see in what deep shock he's in. Did you palpate him at all? No, I was too busy fixing up his arm. Okay, nurse, move his other arm out of my way. But make sure that blood keeps feeding. Yes, sir. Well, there's no sign from the outside he hit that hard. Well, he took most of the force of the shock on his arm. Mm. His abdomen is pretty rigid. Yeah. I don't like the feel of his liver. And I... I can't locate the spleen. Nurse. Yes, sir. Alert OR, possible emergency operation. Hepatography. See if Gentry's free to assist. Yes, Dr. Hobbs. Uh, what about anesthesia? I'll get Dr. Schultz for the anesthesia, general inhalation. But uh, tell him the spleen is involved. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Dom? You slip a stitch? Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, maybe I speak as a poor old 27-year-old resident internist, but is an operation really necessary? If there's liver damage, can't we control it medically? It could be fatal not to go in and stop the bleeding, I'm sure, is there. It could be just as fatal to operate while he's in deep shock. It's a toss-up. But we don't have to argue about it yet. Let's get him an x-ray and patch up his other troubles. You handle that while I go out and see the sergeant and find out a little bit more about just who this carcass is that we're arguing about. How's the patient, Doc? Uh, it's touch and go, Sergeant. Did you get an identification? <laughs> Did I? And have we bought ourselves a live one? See, this guy, Trent. Now, the reason I guess none of us reacted too much to his name is he's been out of the picture a long time. I thought they got divorced. Who? Laura Stanton and him. Laura Stanton? The Philadelphia Stantons. Multi-millionaire family. She married this actor who turned out to be a real bad actor Maybe 20 years ago. Oh, well, they'd be out of my circle. Oh, them kind of people are outside of my circle. In one way, and, and in another way, they ain't. Now, I, I just talked to the lieutenant, and he wants to keep this under wraps until we get the story straight. Now, first of all, is this guy going to live? I can't answer that, Sergeant. He's an X-ray now, and where we go from there is an open book. The one thing I do know, that now he's identified, we've got to get his family or... Uh, his nearest relative here fast. Mm, I guess that'd be his daughter. And let me have her phone number so I can bring her in. My guess is that an emergency operation is indicated. Technically, I'd need permission to go ahead with the risk involved. Well, you're busy, Doc. Well, why don't you let me handle that for you? I'll get her down here right away. Okay. Well, I'll be right with you, Dom. He's got some wet plates may tell the story better than we know yet. But I have a hunch I have to operate. And from what you tell me, I'd feel a lot safer if I had the family's permission. I won't let you down, Doc. Now, they're um, still wet, a little hard to read, but you see on the scanner. Yeah. No broken ribs, maybe the uh, sixth, seventh cracked a little, but no real fracture. Yeah, yeah, Dom, I agree. No evidence of fracture, or that the liver was damaged externally. But damn it, this is just a gut reaction. I know there's bleeding there. Dural hematoma, pelvic hematoma, aneurysm, I don't know. I think we got to go in. Only two things against that old buddy. What? Now, uh, first, we've got to build him up so he can take the operation. Okay, no argument there, but what's number two? Two? You've got to keep your own skirts clean. Someone in the family's got to sign a release. There's no problem in that. His daughter has been contacted, and she's on her way to the hospital right now. <laughs> How's that for timing? <laughs> Dr. Hobbs? Who? Mrs. Harcourt Stanton. She did? No, no, I, I'm expecting a Mrs. Olivia Trent. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That must be the grandmother. That's of course. Send her right in. See. Is this the uh, legendary Mrs. Stanton, the one who wore sneakers to the inauguration ball? Well, I know nothing about the ladies' idiosyncrasies, Dom. I guess with her background, she can afford to do it. <laughs> You're about to learn some of her idiosyncrasies. How do you know so much about her? I was born and bred in Paoli, just outside of Philly. 
I'm a treasure house of knowledge about it and Rittenhouse Square and then people like the Stantons. Uh, you want me to let her in before she breaks it down? Yeah, maybe you'd better. About time. I detest being kept waiting. You're very young for a surgeon, Dr. Hart. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Renzulli. I'm the resident. All I do is make guesses. The mistakes... I leave up to Dr. Hobbs. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Stanton? Oh, so you know who I am. Oh, yes. The nurse warned me. I mean, alerted me. I, uh, I was expecting your granddaughter, Miss Trent. Olivia seldom leaves the house. She's a recluse. She is extremely delicate and easily upset. Besides, she would have been of no legal use to you. She hasn't reached her 18th birthday yet. I'm still her legal guardian. Oh, I see. Uh, I understand you want permission to operate on my son-in-law. Well, we would merely like uh, authorization in case it should become necessary. Well, is it or isn't it? I'm afraid it isn't quite that simple, Mrs. Stanton. Why not? You know what happened early this morning? I know that my daughter Laura left our house with her husband and that he smashed the car into a stone wall. He smashed himself into the same wall. Only my daughter is dead and he is still alive. But very seriously injured. There's damage to the liver, probably the spleen is affected, and there's hematoma and severe internal bleeding. At this moment, what would you estimate his chances of recovery from a surgical procedure might be? I can be too hopeful. Perhaps 50-50. And if the operation is not performed, Dr. Rensuri? Well, if his condition doesn't improve in the next 12 to 24 hours, I could be wrong. The, The operation would become mandatory. But if we wait, in the meantime, he might bleed to death? We'd never let it go that far. But in your opinion, without the operation, his chances of survival would be lessened? In my opinion, yes. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all I wanted to know. I uh, have the consent form for the operation here, Mrs. Stanton, if you just sign it now. I haven't the slightest intention of signing it. I hope you're right, Dr. Hobbs, and that Trent bleeds to death as you anticipate. It would be a small return for the way he has bled my family. I absolutely forbid any operation. But, Mrs. Stanton... I'm gambling that you are right, Dr. Hobbs. And Dr. Rensuli is wrong. The best this man deserves is to die. And I would be happy to think he did it the same way he did it to my daughter. Slowly, irreversibly, just to bleed to death. <laughs> There are drives and forces without the supernatural just as terrifying as the fires of hell, the curses of witches. Here now, today, an old woman embittered by who knows what past depredations against her and her family seems to hold the fate of a man quite literally in her hands. Is she right or wrong to deny Dana Trent his chance for life? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Dr. Mitchell Hobbs, assistant chief of surgery at Temple Hospital, had been on duty for nearly 24 hours. After leaving instructions about his patient, he allowed himself the necessary luxury of some sleep. But when his alarm woke him at 7 a.m., and after examining Dana Trent, this quiet and controlled man became a raging tiger. Nurse! Nurse! Yes, Dr. Hobbs. Where is Dr. Renzulli? Well, he went out less than an hour ago. He, he left this for you. What is it? It's a note or a letter. And how come he was wakened before me? Well, he only had the duty since eight last night. He told us to wake him instead of you if necessary. Is this a hospital or a fraternity house? Why should he take it upon himself to... Oh, wait a minute. I'm afraid you're right about Trent, but I don't want you sticking your neck out. I've gone to the old witch to try to change your mind... Wait till you hear from me. A damn young fool. There isn't any time to wait. We might lose a patient. All right, now let's get on the pipe. I want Trent and 516 prep right away. Alert OR. Yes, sir. Same orders as earlier this morning. If Dr. Rizzuli doesn't get back within half an hour, I'm going ahead, permission or no permission. I'll need an assistant and a full abdominal team and the best anesthesiologist you can dig up. 
Maybe you can still get me, Gentry. You only lives a couple blocks away. But I'm serving notice this is emergency. Capital E. Well, do you, do you have a clearance I can file with surgery, Doc? No, I don't. If I lose the patient, my neck's on the block. And if anyone wants a scalpel to cut it loose, he can have mine. <laughs> Yes? Uh, good morning. I'm Dr. Dominic Renzulli from Temple Hospital. Um, I've been trying to reach you by phone, but it seems to be out of order. Oh, my grandmother ordered it taken off the hook. I- I'm Livy. I mean, Olivia Trent. Is something wrong? I'm going to... I'm going to level with you, Miss Trent. There's a whole lot wrong. Could could I see your grandmother? I, I hate to rush you, but time is of the essence. It's about my father? Yes. Oh, please come in. Uh, thank you. I'm... Afraid I can't disturb Grandma. She, um... Well, when she got back from the hospital earlier this morning, I was afraid she was going to collapse, so I gave her a sedative and got her to bed. Yeah. Now, I can't put it any way, but right on the line, Miss Trent. It's your father's life. Now, my chief, a guy I think is the greatest surgeon in the world, is going to operate on your father without consent. And your grandmother is powerful enough to end his career if anything goes wrong. I don't want to take that chance. I see. Did you bring the consent with you? Well, uh, sure. Then give it to me and I'll sign it. Uh, I I appreciate that, Miss Trent, but you're not of age. I mean, legal age. I am 18. But your grandmother said you weren't. Look, grandmother does and says a lot of things to protect me. It's her way of life. I guess a person would only have to look at me to see how overprotected I am. Well, it's about time I did something on my own. So please let me sign the paper. It'll be quite legal. Well... Would you like to see a copy of my birth certificate? No, no, it isn't that. It's, Are it's... you scared about what Grandma's attitude will be? I, I just don't want to get you or anyone in trouble. Your, your grandmother has already refused permission for the operation. Because she wants my father to die. But naturally you don't. Oh, I guess this will sound terrible to you, but I don't care. He's made a pretty good job of wrecking all of our lives. But Mother asked me last night... Well, that's beside the point. What it is, I suppose, is whatever else he is, he is a human being, isn't he? So where do I sign? If you're sure... That you know what you're doing. I'm sure. You ought to read it first. It doesn't matter. She said to save a little love for him. And if that makes her happy, that's what I want. Okay. Is uh, is there a table somewhere? Oh, right here by the phone. Give me the pen. I am. I'm on my way to operate. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I don't. If you can see the blood count on the rest of his vital signs, you'll know. Simmer down, man. I just wanted to, you know, you have my blessings and the family signature. You mean you got that tough old dame to sign a release? Uh, I didn't have to tilt that windmill. I have Miss Trent's signature. Oh, but she's under it. Fear not. I am sitting here gazing at a legal document I haven't seen since I did my tour of duty as an intern on the OB floor. A birth certificate. Olivia Pearson Trent is a doddering old crone of practically 19, and she signed the consent form, which I'm about to bring back to the hospital. The lady killer, as my father used to say in another era. <laughs> See you at the shop. Well, by the time you do, it'll all be over one way or the other. I'm on my way to the operating room right now. May I ask what you're doing in my house, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh... Renzulli, grandmother. And he came here to get permission to operate on Daddy. And you gave it? Yes. No matter what he's done, no amount of wrongs make a right. Well, I suppose there's no way I really could have stopped it. But before you leave, Dr. Renzulli, I want you doctors to know what kind of man you're trying to save. Mrs. Stanton, I... Oh, no, you force yourself into this. You stay until I shame the devil enough to tar you with the same brush. Grandmother, please. When one is as prominent socially as the Stantons are, 
And as wealthy. One needs constant protection. Grandmother. Quiet. Especially girls. I tried to protect Laura as carefully as I protect Olivia. But I failed. You can't live other people's lives for them. They have to live their own. Would you want me to have left you free to lead the life your mother led? Maybe if she'd had more freedom of choice, she mightn't have ended up as she did. Are you making me responsible for that? No! Uh, um, Mrs. Stanton, I, I really... I'm not to... finished yet, young man. I had a very difficult time having Olivia's mother. I lost three children before she came, and I never could have any more after her. I was also not as young as I should have been, and she was premature. It was a very difficult time for me, particularly since within a year after I brought Laurie home, my husband died very suddenly. You see, Laurie never knew a father. I had to bring her up and protect her. Grandmother, hush, child, hush. I want to get this said. There, there was a young man in my husband's organization named Dana Trent. He was my husband's secretary. He was a great deal of help through the years, I thought then, because of his regard for my husband. I would have advanced him in the business, but he lacked ambition. And I needed him for other things. He was a suitable escort for a widow, and Laura was crazy about him from the time she could walk and talk. I could never marry again after court died, and I felt that he served rather well as a sort of... A surrogate father for Laura. Oh, he was a charmer with very winning ways and handsome, and I saw to it he had every luxury. I'm a very tough, smart woman, but about some things we can all be blind. And when Laura was 16, Mr. Dana Trent made his first repayment of my kindness and indulgence. <laughs> Laurie is going to have my child. It seemed appropriate for me to request her hand in marriage. You unspeakable... Laura, is this true? Yes, Mother. Oh, well, how long... She's in you... her fourth month. Too late to do anything about it, I assure you. That's what you think. I'm going to have you arrested for statutory rape. You do, Mother, and, and I'll kill myself. I... I love Dana. I've always loved him. And I want to marry him. I want to have his child. Just as I've always loved Laura. You know that. Leave the room, Laura. It's no use. It's all right, honey. Go ahead. Just leave this up to me. Everything is up to you from now on. And for always, Dana. I love you. If I had a gun, Dana, I'd kill you. No, no, you wouldn't. You know Laura's future depends on me, her happiness. You wouldn't do anything to destroy that. So we shall be married, go to Europe, drop out of sight for a year or so, and then bring you back your grandchild. Oh, there may be a little talk, but that blows over soon enough. Now, shall we discuss income? I warn you, I shall expect it to be a rather large one. It was a very large one. And they did bring my granddaughter back to me and abandoned her with me. Oh, I know it broke Laura's heart to leave her baby. But Dana had her spellbound. She was his slave, his, 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 to do with as he wanted. I'd wanted love for my daughter, but not a sick love like this. For the next ten years, he dragged her all over Europe. Scandal after scandal, women, drinking, gambling. Heaven knows what other filth he dragged her through. When I finally rushed to Paris to answer her cry for help, I could scarcely recognize the ghost that opened the door to let me in. Laura. Oh, good Lord. My poor baby. What happened to you? I lost my baby, Molly. No, honey. Libby's alive and well. I almost brought her with me. Libby? Olivia, your daughter. Oh. I lost my baby. This other one. Oh, you were pregnant again? Yes. Pregnant. Dana didn't want it. He made me... I went 
to a doctor. There isn't any more baby. I did it for him. Where is Dana? He left me. Because I had the... These things that happen. I'm... I'm not myself a lot of the time. Who is Laura? I, I don't remember. If I can't have Dana, I want my mommy. I want to go home. That's the man you want to save. Your daughter's never got a divorce? No. Because, incredibly, even up to the last, she was in love with him. And besides... My mother was in hospitals and sanitariums until the beginning of this year. She came home for my 18th birthday. And so did Dana Trent. What was left of him. Do you know why, Doctor? No, but, uh... Really, Mrs. Stanton, I must get back to... I'm almost finished. Before my husband died, he'd settled a large trust fund on Libby. It came due on her 18th birthday. You gave the money to your mother, didn't you, Libby? Yes. It was mine. And Mother wanted to pay you back for supporting her all these years. I thought if it would make her happy... What she really wanted it for was to run away with your father again. It was found in the trunk of the car after the smash-up. You still want to save that... that scum, that filth? Um, uh, Mrs. Stanton, I... Look, I, I'm sympathetic, and, and I'm appalled, but doctors are not judges... Our only function is to save lives, good or bad. Very well. I hope you fail, young man, because if you don't, I will not have my granddaughter put through the agony her mother has suffered. I'll find a way to take care of Dana Trent myself. Both Dr. Dominic Renzulli and Libby look at this indomitable and tough old woman with some consternation in their eyes. She is just formidable enough to carry out her threat. Will she have the opportunity? And will she actually go through with it? I'll answer those questions when I return shortly with Act Three. There's an old piece of doggerel which runs... The rain, it raineth on the just and also on the unjust fella. But chiefly on the just, because the unjust steals the just's umbrella. A truism that is altogether too apt, as in our story here. But unfair as the ways of the world may be, no one of us can set himself up as God and decide on the right of another to live or die. After closing the door on Dr. Renzulli, a weary and unhappy Libby crosses the hall toward the stairs, but is stopped by the imperative voice of her grandmother. Olivia? Yes, grandmother? Where are you going? Upstairs to lie down. I, I don't feel very well. I, I want to talk to you for just a moment. Please, dear. Oh, all right. But not too long. It, there's been enough talking. I know. I'm sorry I dragged up the awful past. It made me sick to my stomach, too. But I thought, I... Look, I hope... You know you could never convince any doctor to allow a man to die when there's any possibility of saying oh, it. Oh, I know it consciously. But deep in my subconscious is buried such a hate. A terrible, consuming, driving hate against that man, I won't say his name, that I am willing him to die. And if God doesn't answer my prayer, then, well, that's my business. No one else's. Libby, dear. Yes, darling, what is it? I need, I, I want some, some reassurance from you. Me? What can I offer about your mother? I... Oh, Libby, was it all my fault? Did I overprotect her, shield her too much from life? Smother her, drive her to run away from all my love? 
to someone else. No, you mustn't blame yourself. Mother made her own choices. But it is hard, Grandmother, to be oh, hemmed in. Not to have freedom to move where you want. Decide what you want. Well, I suppose you plan to fly the nest, too. I may. It's time for me to start finding out for myself what I'm all about. So you do blame me for your mother? That isn't true. Oh, yes. Even for her death? That certainly isn't true. And I could, well, sort of prove that. How? Because of what happened last night. Oh, did you have a bad dream? I, I thought I heard you call out. What happened? Well, I, I... I woke up suddenly and... I suddenly felt this cold, cold chill. And you know how warm last night was, and I, I had my window wide open, and... Then... All of a sudden... Huh? What? Oh, damn, that loose shot. It's all right. Mother, you came back. Only for a moment, my darling. Just to say goodbye. What, Dad? At the wheel. At the wheel. But I want to ask you, now that I finally see him for what he really is, save a little warning for him. He can't help himself any more than I can. right through you. The, the wall, the pictures, even the pattern of the paper. That's because I'm already dead. I love you. And neither of us deserve to live. You see, I had to grab the wheel and kill us both because we were poisoning your life. Suddenly the chill was gone, and the wind disappeared, and the shutters stopped clattering, and it was warm again. But I know it wasn't a dream. How? Because, because I looked at the clock and it was exactly ten minutes after two. When did the police sergeant tell us he heard the crash? That's right. Ten minutes after two. So Laura came to her senses at last and tried to kill him. She... She asked me to mourn a little for him. Only as usual, he gets away with it. He doesn't have to be mourned because he escaped while Laura had to die. Oh, Granny, Granny, please don't. I'll be all right. I, when I... When it's over. Oh, I'm very tired myself and sick to my heart. Granny. Let's both go lie down. I'll help you upstairs. Uh, oh, maybe I've lived enough years. It's time to rest. Should I get a doctor? Oh, no, no, Libby. I have no need of doctors. No. Just peace of mind. Silly. Doctor? Uh, why, yes, Miss Trent. What, what is it? Look, I, I, I've got to talk uh, quickly, quickly. So, somewhere more private, please. Well, come on, I'll take you to Dr. Hobbs' office. What's wrong? It's my grandmother. Have you seen her? Here, I mean. No. Why? Well, shortly after you left this morning, we both went to lie down. I couldn't sleep. I kept worrying because I'd... I'd remembered about the gun. What gun? Well, the one we kept in the chest of drawers in the upstairs hall... Grandmother always kept one there, loaded. Oh, you know, three women alone in a house with nothing but women servants should have protection, she said. Well, the gun is gone. Oh, and you think your grandmother took it? You heard what she said about taking things into her own hands. Uh, look, uh, this is Dr. Hobbs' office. I'll put you in here while I... Libby! What are you doing here? Looking for you. Why, why are you here? Well, I came to see Dr. Hobbs. His nurse told me that I'm too late. The operation has already begun, so I'm waiting. Why? 
hope I have a vested interest in the result. Obviously, my future depends on it. It may be rather a long wait, Mrs. Stanton. Uh, may I take your bag and put it somewhere? No. Here? I prefer to keep it myself. I just thought you looked uncomfortable. I am uh, quite comfortable, thank you, Doctor. I'm accustomed to carrying a bag. I uh, just look kind of uh, heavy. It is. Granny, let me have the bag. Now, what is all this fuss about my bag? What for? I want the gun you have in it. What gun? The one from the chest in the upstairs hall. The one that is missing. Oh, so you noticed that too, eh? What do you mean, too? I did go for the gun. I had intended to use it, but it wasn't there. Wasn't there? That's right. Oh, don't look so disbelieving and scared. Here, take the bag and see for yourself. I'm quite unarmed and reasonably safe. Well, then who took it? I did a lot of thinking about that. And suddenly, remembering back to your, well, let's say your dream, I suddenly am quite sure it was Dana. Why? Because I don't think your mother went with him willingly. I think that's why... Well, we won't go into that in front of Dr. Rensuli. I think when we check with the sergeant, the gun will be found in the remains of the car. Funny. I'm a foolish, rigid woman who's made a lifetime of mistakes. But suddenly day I realized how blind I've been and my eyes were opened. By my granddaughter. Me? Yes. Oh, poor Laura. I sheltered her, overprotected her, kept her from any freedom of choice, just as you said. But I won't make the same mistake again. Oh, Granny, do you have your own money, Libby? Your future is your own. I won't interfere anymore. I'll get out of your life. You'll be better off without me. Granny? Yes. Just this. Hold me. Oh, I'm not letting you go. You see, I've made my choice. To stay with you. Oh, but Libby, you... I see everything so clearly now. I never had a mother or a father. But I had you. And I'll always have you. Oh, sure. Someday there'll be a man for me. <laughs> a man you'll help me pick. And there'll be children. And you're young enough to be here for once more around the clock... And this time it'll be all happiness you, me, and Mother ever missed. As for my father, let him come around. And we'll pick him out for good. Come on, Granny. Let's go home and start building a new life. No sense us sticking around. But would you please excuse us, Dr. Ranzuli? Of course. And, uh... The best of luck. <laughs> we don't need it. We'll make our own. So, that's the whole story, Mitch. And that's the ever-loving character you plucked from the jaws of death. Well, I had no choice, Dom. But it's lucky she didn't decide to take the law into her own hands. What do you mean? Oh, the operation was a success as far as it went. I fixed up everything the car crash caused. But what 48 years of rough living have done to Dana Trent, no surgeon could fix. He has advanced cirrhosis of the liver and an extra quirk that nature, or maybe providence, built in. An intrahepatic biliary obstruction. Non-operable? Non-operable. It's a safe bet he'll never leave this hospital alive. <laughs> Or just the mathematical certainty that if you roll the dice long enough, you've got to turn up snake eyes. If ever a man deserved death, it was Dana Trent. It's a pleasing thought to know that in the end, he made it for himself. From the Apocrypha in the Bible, and most probably the source of the piece of doggerel I quoted earlier, he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. This time the rain fell where I think we all would have wanted it to. And at least for once, 
evil found its own reward. Our cast included Mary Jane Higby, Rosemary Rice, Joan Lovejoy, Russell Horton, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Tonight's WOR Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. <laughs>